Do you like Lisa Frank? Because I do. Hey Sun Space Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria, and today we're going to bring Lisa Frank to life. Not that long ago, Morgan Donner, who's also super awesome, made a renaissance kirtle with like a rainbow Lisa Frank theme and I loved it. I loved it so much that I was like, I need a Lisa Frank dress too because I don't know about you guys, but I am a child of the 90s when Lisa Frank was all the rage and I absolutely loved it and I still do. So I was so inspired that I went out and looked for some Lisa Frank fabric myself. I ended up finding this rainbow fabric with little like leopard spots in black already in it. It's perfect. It's so Lisa Frank. By the way, if you don't know what Lisa Frank is, back in the 90s, Lisa Frank used to make all kinds of like school supplies, stationery, folders, pencils, pencil cases, notebooks, all kinds of things. At one point, I even had some Lisa Frank plushies, like some stuffed dogs and cats. They had this unicorn that had like a rainbow mane. They had cats. I remember there were cats in a shoe. There was like dolphins that the whole landscape was really rainbowy, colorful. It was just such a joyful world. And who doesn't want a joyful world in their lives? I know I do. So this fabric was absolutely perfect for Lisa Frank. I knew I wanted to make a short dress out of it, but I had two ideas. I either wanted to make a short medieval dress, so sort of a history bound medieval, or I wanted to do a dirndl. Both of these obviously are a fantasy take on the original styles of those dresses. But since I didn't know which one to do, I thought I'll ask you guys which one I should do. So I pulled my Instagram followers and y'all picked Dirndl. And you know what? I am a woman of my word. So I went with the Dirndl and today we are going to make a Lisa Frank Dirndl. So let's go. For this dress, I'm using the pattern that I show you how to draft in my dirndl tutorial, which I will link for you below. I'm also making bias binding, which I do use in that dirndl tutorial as a method to finish the edges of the bodice. And you'll see here pretty soon how I applied this bias binding around the front edges and the armholes. Right now I have sewn the bodice part together mostly. I'm doing this in just two layers. So sometimes when I make these bodices, I'll interline them in canvas and then line them with something on the back as well. This time I'm making it nice and light. So it's just that outer Lisa Frank fabric and the canvas on the inside. So I've sewn both of those layers individually and then I've just put them together and I'm starting to attach bias binding. So I've done the sleeves right now. I think this is off to such a cool start. Let's try it on and see how it's looking. It's looking so good. I'm so excited about this dress. I've had a little bit of a slow time getting started just because I've been doing so much work this week. I've been working on video editing. I digitized an entire pattern for my 18th century stays. That was yesterday and it took the whole day and I've just been loading myself down with tasks. This morning I went into the sewing room to start working on this project and I actually was not there mentally. Like I had to go take a break and get myself on track by just allowing myself to be slow for a couple of hours. And then I was able to come in here and now I'm ready to make a really super cool Lisa Frank dress. For this bodice, I am using the pattern that I already have drafted. You saw me use this pattern before on the like rainbow hearts dirndl. I seem to like making rainbow dirndls, don't I? So I'll link to that video where I made that dress last year. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Hey, 
Okay, so I've got the bias bindings sewn all the way around the front edge and the neckline, as well as the sleeve openings. Let's try it on. It is looking so good. I really like it. As much as I want to finish this dress today, because I could make this dress in one day, I'm not really feeling that energetic today. I have a headache that seems to be getting worse at this point. It's late enough in the day that I think I can go ahead and switch over to doing housework and starting dinner. The reason that I'm even mentioning this is because so often when I was younger, I pushed myself and worked through pain and my body telling me to stop. And I want to put it out there that if your body tells you to stop, that means it's a good idea to stop. And in fact, if you take care of your body and do what it is asking you to do, then maybe later you can come back with even more energy and you can get more done in the long run because you're actually working with your biological rhythms. So just a little bit of advice from Auntie Seamstress Daisy. <laughs> Surprise, it's actually still the same evening and we are back for a little update. I totally slowed down. I actually sat on the sofa for a while and I generally just took it easy, rested, I ate a little bit. At this point, I have sewn the boning channels in the bodice. So I have the boning channel across the front here. I actually have another one on the front, which is gonna go on the other side of lacing. So if I put the lacing right here, I don't need that, but because I'm gonna put the lacing in here, I need one on the other side to stabilize it. And then I have one boning channel that comes kind of diagonal across the bust. I have a boning channel at that side back seam and a boning channel in the center back. So let's put it on and I'll show you how the bodice is looking. There's no boning inserted yet. Amazing, I think it looks so good. You're starting to see a little shape because it does have stabilization with that canvas interlining. When I wasn't feeling well earlier, I could have easily barreled through some more work. I may have gotten through all these boning channels and eventually couldn't handle it anymore. And that's what young Daisy would have done. But current Daisy doesn't do that. So because I rested, not only do I feel better, I actually got these boning channels sewn and it was super easy to sew them because I was feeling well again. It is so important to listen to your body because that affects the outcome of everything you do. All right, I'm signing off for the night and I'll see you back here tomorrow to finish up this dress. It is the next day. I'm feeling good and back to work. Today I'm hoping to finish the actual sewing on the dress. What I need to do today is insert boning into the bodice. I need to apply the closure here to the front of the bodice. I have this modesty panel I've been working on. It's basically just a piece of that fashion fabric, the Lisa Frank fabric, and backed in the same cotton canvas that I backed my bodice in. So I need to put that behind the lacing for the front of my dress. And then I need to put the skirt together, including the pockets. The skirt will need to be pleated onto the bodice. And then I'm gonna apply some really cool black velvet trim all around the edges of this garment. I decided to use plastic boning, and this is that standard stuff that you can buy at Joann's and everywhere. The reason I'm using this lower quality boning versus what I usually use in corsets and the like is because I'm not going to attempt for this garment to do any sort of cinching and not even any type of shaping of the body whatsoever. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and wear a bra under this and call it good. So basically the boning just needs to make the bodice stand upright. I love this black velvet trim that I'm using. I think it gives it a little bit of texture and just that extra bit of intrigue.
By the way, this dress does have pockets, which are inserted into the side seams of the skirt. I pleated my skirt onto my bodice. You could also gather the skirt on if you too are making a dirndl inspired dress. Either way is totally fine. I've done a slight alteration to the standard instructions and that is that I'm putting more fabric on the back of the skirt than the front so that way there's just a little bit more volume in the back than the front. It's not that dramatic. I put about three extra inches on each side onto the back. So basically when I found the side of the skirt, I just made sure that that was three inches forward. So here instead of here, you know, that was treated as the side. I went ahead and made those the side seams too, so the pockets are actually in those side seams that are going to be, you know, the way it's cut it's slightly toward the front, but the way it's sewn on and pleated it will be the true side. So that means that when I divided the skirt up into pleating sections, I basically treated it in quarters or halves. So the front half I divided in half and then in half again and half again and the back half I did the same. So I just treated it as though I was starting at already divided in half. So that means all of the back pleats are marked the same distance as each other. All of the front pleats are marked the same distance as each other and they are slightly smaller than the back pleats because there's slightly less fabric in that front section. A lot of dresses throughout history have more fabric toward the back of the skirt than they do in the front. It's not something that always happens, but it does happen. So while the other pattern that I did and the other dress that you saw me do last year had an equally gathered skirt, I wanted to play this time with putting a little bit more fabric in the back. Ultimately, you can do it both ways. You can make the skirt equally pleated or gathered, or you can put more fabric in the back. I've seen dresses that are examples of both, and it's really up to your preference. Here I am hemming the bottom of the skirt by folding it over twice and then stitching it down. And after the dress is hemmed, I can then apply some more of that black velvet ribbon trim, just like I did for the bodice. my goodness I love it so much it is yeah it's fantastic I think it was such a good idea to go ahead and add a second band of black velvet trim to the bottom it just really pops it's so good I still need to sew on the lacing contraptions to the front here and lace it up and then it's it's a dirndl it's a dress well, it's basically a generic folk dress inspired dress, right? I always want to go to Darndall because, you know, we have so many Oktoberfest events, people tend to call them all Darndalls. I found a necklace that has this leopard, this Lisa Frank leopard on it, so I went ahead and ordered it for my reveal. I'm going to put together a super cute Lisa Frank style outfit. I'm so excited. <laughs> I 
I had some of these bodice lacing filigree pieces and I used those, actually all the ones I had left of that style, for the front of the bodice. So the dirndl is looking really, really cool. And now what I need is an apron. It just so happens that I have some black cotton fabric ready to be made into an apron. And I am gonna use some of this really cool black lace to give it a little bit of texture and character. So what I did is basically I made a rectangle for the apron and I'm gonna gather it on top into a waistband. So here toward the bottom, I actually cut it apart and I sewed the lace on there so that you get some kind of show through behind the lace. You'll be able to see a little bit of the dress there. And I think that's so cool. I'm so excited. One thing I loved back in the 90s was scrunchies. I know they've made a comeback lately too, so I think it's very timely that I should make a scrunchie. I actually used to make a lot of scrunchies, but it had been so long I kind of forgot how to do it, so it took me a minute to figure it out again. But basically, I just made like a really long rectangle of fabric, sewed that into a tube, and put elastic through the middle, and sewed it shut in the back. It is now the next day. I have basically finished the dress, like the dirndl part and the apron. I'm gonna show you how that's looking. I'm also gonna show you some accessories that I've been working on. Now, because I thought I might wanna wear this to Dragon Con, and also I might wanna wear it out and about anywhere, I'm gonna need a mask, so. So I had put together this little headscarf. This is actually smaller than it was before because I cut some of it off. So one thing that happens is that I kind of get in my head and get stuck on an idea sometimes. And I was so stuck on the whole dirndl idea. Like I was looking at what headwear I should be wearing with the dirndl. And of course that's where I came up with the Lisa Frank headscarf. And sometimes it helps to have another opinion or another option. So actually Rob Bob came home from work and I was showing him this and he was like why don't you make a scrunchie and I was like yeah why don't I make a scrunchie like duh so that was just getting out of the dirndl headspace and into the Lisa Frank 1990s headspace and I made a scrunchie I used to make so many scrunchies when I was little and I hadn't made one in years so this was really fun what I want to do with the scrunchie too to really bring about the 90s style is I'm going to do a side ponytail. I think I'm going to do the side ponytail scrunchie for the reveal, but I kind of like this one too, so I think I'm going to keep it around for now. I also got these little charms, and I made these little charms into earrings. These are so Lisa Frank, look at them. I absolutely love Lisa Frank. It's something cool from my childhood and <laughs> honestly, I think I'll always like it because it's colorful and beautiful and it's just great. If you could bring back any nostalgic thing from your childhood, something that you just loved or it brought you joy in some way, what would you bring back?
I waited a long time to do this reveal, and it's actually kind of silly that I waited so long. I really wanted to get snap bracelets because they were all the rage in the 90s, and I ordered some sequin rainbow snap bracelets, and because I ordered them from China, and for some reason this was one of the slower shipments that I've actually ordered, so it took like a month for them to get here. Anyway, I think it was well worth the wait. What do you guys think? This dress is so fun. I feel like this is my childhood dreams coming to life right here. I mean, a rainbow cheetah spotted print dress. What more could you want? This dress really represents one of the main reasons why I sew, and that is to bring dreams to life and to express myself through what I'm wearing. I love that this dress is so colorful, it's so fun, and it was just such a cool project to make. My upcoming videos are going to show you some of the other projects that I've been working on this month, which I'm so excited to share, and I hope you will join me. If you get some inspiration, please be sure to tag me. I'd love to see what you make. I'm Daisy Victoria on all the social medias. My website is daisyvictoria.com, and a special thank you to my patrons who help me so much to continue making amazing content like this. I hope you all have an absolutely magical day and I'll see you real soon in the next project. Bye-bye.